Hello YouTube, welcome back to the channel. On this episode, we're going to be looking at e-bikes. I'm going to be going through what you need to consider before buying your first e-bike. I've now had my e-bike for six months. I'm going to share with you some of my observations and experiences and um, what you need to look out for and how it differs from a standard bike. Here's the e-bike. This is a Cycle Tricity 1500 watt. It's called The Beast. It's got 16 amp hour battery. Um, speed controller. There's the, it's a hub drive motor, not mid drive. As you can see, I've done over a thousand kilometers. It's uh, pedal assisted, but it also has a throttle. Quite a standard e-bike in many respects. Um, it's not really a high performance e-bike, it's more of a cheap frame with um, obviously the main selling point being the motor. Before we look at what you need to consider before buying your first electric bike, we're going to quickly look at the pros and the cons. Um, we're going to start off with the pros. Firstly, with an electric bike you're going to be able to travel a lot faster. This will significantly reduce your commuting time, especially if you're here to and from work. Um, also, it enables you to transverse uh, more difficult terrain, hills and routes that you wouldn't be comfortable taking with a traditional bike. Um, the second thing is it de-stresses the ride. Um, it's a lot less stressful when, you, you know, when you're being assisted. It, it just allows you to look at the scenery and to focus and concentrate on other issues in your life. Um, the third factor I would say is fun. It's just a lot of fun, especially if you've got a powerful electric bike. You can just use it to nip, uh, zip around and just go out and ride just for the sake of riding rather than just using it explicitly for commuting or to get as a means to an end. Um, the other thing I think this is genuine. Uh, there was a study a couple of years back that actually proved that people with e-bikes did more exercise than people without. I think this is true because uh, with myself and my traditional bike, I've done more. I've done significantly more miles on my new electric bike than I ever done on my other top end top uh, mountain bike. Um, I've already done a thousand kilometres, and that's in the space of I think about four months. Whereas I don't even think I've done two hundred kilometres on my old traditional bike. Um, the other thing you've got to consider if if you're a friend of the earth or Greenpeace. Um, Electric bike will significantly reduce emissions and congestion, and obviously pollution is a big topic currently. Um, obviously, it's not going to reduce it as much as a traditional bike because obviously you have to charge the the battery, which probably comes from a nuclear power station. But it's still better than a car and you know a train or anything like that, which will use obviously more pollution in getting you where you want to where you want to go. Um, now we're going to have a quick look at the the cons. Um, there's not too many cons really. One of the main ones is cost. To obviously to buy an electric bike, it's going to be a lot more expensive than a traditional bike because there's a lot more components. Um, and generally, because it's a new market, there's a lot of manufacturers out there trying to exploit it. So there's is a bit of a premium for buying the kit, the components, and the brands. Um, also, maintenance is a bit of an issue with the cost. Obviously, there's more components, more things to go wrong, more things you need to maintain. Um, the battery being one of them. Generally, you're only going to get a thousand charge out of every battery, and the batteries range in price from about three hundred pounds up to pretty much eight hundred pounds. Um, that that being said, you only if even if you're using commuting every day, you're only going to be charging like five times a week. So it's going to take three or four years before you get anywhere near that threshold, and the battery will likely last longer anyway. Um, the other aspect you've got to look at is safety. Um, you're travelling a lot further, a lot faster, you're using it more frequently. The risks of being in a collision or an accident are far higher. And if you are in an accident, you're likely going to be travelling a lot faster. So it's absolutely critical you have a helmet to protect your head, obviously. A uh, nice jacket so you don't feel the wind. You're moving through the air a lot faster, so it's like a motorbike, you do get wind chill. Um, the other thing I've noticed with uh, between a traditional bike and the electric bike is when you're riding, uh, especially downhills and you're being assisted, you've got 
probably about 30 miles an hour. You get gnats and stuff in the eye, so you really have to wear some sort of sunglasses or eye protection. Um, tradi traditionally, with a bike, it was really needed because you're never going that fast. But that is absolutely critical. The other thing you've got to consider as well is um, if you're riding in the dark, the, the lights, the traditional lights you can buy for normal bikes probably won't be bright enough for an electric bike. Obviously you're moving faster, so you need to see further ahead to make manoeuvres, etc. Um, so I would really go for a high-end, um, at least a thousand lumens uh, torch or a high-end bike light. And you have to position the light slightly up so it's projecting further in front of you. That is really important, especially if you're going along uh, public highways and routes with lots of um, you know, trees and, and, and posts and you know, gates and things like that, really important. The other thing you can consider is an electric bike is a lot heavier than a traditional bike. You can't really cycle an electric bike unassisted, so you're obviously dependent on the battery being charged. Um, this makes it more difficult, so if you run out of battery and you're trying to cycle up a hill, there is a slight drag on most of the motors. There are some newer generation motors coming out where you can decouple the motor from the chain or the crankset or whatever, so there's no resistance from the motor itself. But generally, most motors, uh, whether it be mid-drive or hub-drive, will give you resistance. So not only is the bike heavier, but you're also getting like a braking effect when you're trying to cycle. So you do get a little bit of range anxiety, um, like uh, an electric car. If you are you know, focused, you, know, you don't really want to run out, especially if you live in a hilly place like Wales, for instance. Um, the other thing you've got to look at is security. These are obviously significantly more valuable over a traditional bike. You know, a, a decent electric bike you're looking at probably bare minimum £1,500 very easily, it can go to about £3,000 and the high performance ones you're looking at probably even eight grand. that's a lot of money. Um, thieves obviously target these systems, um, so you really have to buy high-end uh, locks and really consider where you're leaving your bike. Um, also if, you, if you're going for the insurance route, um, it's going to cost you a lot more money because the bike is a lot more valuable it's going to be targeted. The other thing you've got to look at, I think, is the legalities. If you're going to go for a pure legal, you know, ticks all the boxes, you're looking at 250 watts, that's not really going to be powerful enough to be attractive over a traditional bike, especially if you consider the costs. Um, so, a lot of manufacturers get around this by providing dual functionality, which means you can switch, the power is limited by the controller and a display and you can literally switch the the power depending on if you're on or off-road um, I would recommend you do not go for a 250 watt I know some of the mid drives 250 mid drives are quite powerful and talky for hills but generally I think you're gonna be disappointed considering there's Bafang uh, ultra motor which kicks out 1500 to 2000 watts yeah, that's something what I'd consider if I was starting out again um, because I really think to make this the bridge where you want to go from a standard bike to like midway to a motorbike, which I think that's what where electric bikes should be, you really want at least 1500 to I say 2000 watts. You don't have to use the power because you can use it on pedal assist or you can use it on throttle. Again, I'd recommend you have a throttle as well because there's sometimes you just want to add a little bit extra power and you don't want to be toggling through menus etc. Um, yeah, but even though it's strictly illegal, they are currently reviewing the laws, especially in the UK, which is going, they're looking at scooter, electric scooters and mobile uh, technologies to, they're trying to get people out of cars and giving them viable alternative means of transport. Um, so the 250 watt is being reviewed it should rise. I know in America it's 750 watt and Europe it's 500 watts. Uh, generally though, the police don't really enforce it. They're not going to be, you know, doing random stops and searches and you know testing people's e-bikes. So you, you know, you shouldn't really consider that as your main factor when buying an e-bike. In fact, I would actually go for a, um, a more powerful e-bike because you really need the power for the hills. Um, if you don't use it, don't use it. That's fine. The less you use of the power, the longer the battery life will last anyway. 
so it's not really a big consideration. Um, yeah, I think that sums up the pros and the cons of electric bikes. Now we're going to discuss what you need to consider before buying your first electric bike. We're going to start off with applications and use. What do you intend to use the bike for? Are you using it for commuting? Are you using it for fun? Or are you using it for off-roading? Or a mixture of all three? This will dictate which type of bike frame you go for, whether it's a mountain bike style, uh, trekking style, or you know, a folding up sort of bike. And what wheel size you go for, the types of wheels, you know, the tread on the wheels, is it for road, is it for off-road? Also, this will dictate what sort of battery and power unit you're looking at, what sort of motor do you need. If you're using it for commuting and you're surrounded by hills, then you should be looking at a mid-drive rather than a hub drive because it gives you more torque. But if you're if you live in Holland or somewhere there where it's really flat and you're doing long distances, you're going to be really focused on speed rather than torque, in which case a hub drive is perfect. Also, with the battery, you know, do you need 16 amps amp hour or do you need 20? It really depends on you know the interval. If you're using it for commuting, the interval where you're going to be charging. If you're only doing like five miles back and forth to work, you can get to and from work without recharging, which is perfect. But if you're really stretching the distances, you're going to want a large capacity battery. Thankfully, there's plenty of manufacturers out there which produce all sorts of batteries and you can even have them custom built. The second consideration you need to think of is how much you want to spend, price. This will really dictate um, what manufacturers you're looking at. It'll dictate what power levels you're looking at. Obviously, the higher the power, the price increases significantly. Also, the other components on the electric bike, the forks, the suspension, the brakes, the discs, now, even the wheels themselves, the more you spend, the higher the quality and the lighter the bike's going to be. It'll be a titanium, carbon fibre rather than aluminium and steel, etc. And the styles and etc. Um, yeah, but the main considerations in regards to price, I would say, is what speed, power and speed you want and what range you want. When I'm thinking about electric bikes, I'm really thinking... Um, I'm not thinking top end components because most people don't really need the best suspension which would cost like three thousand pounds. You know, no most people aren't going down mountain mountain sides of you know fifty miles an hour. They don't need that sort of spec. Um so if you move on to performance, which is the third consideration, um you this is all about geography, where you're gonna be riding, how long for and how much performance you want. Um Obviously, obviously, this comes into then the legality. You're limited to 250 watt, but that being said, it's not enforced, so I wouldn't use that in your consideration for an electric bike because the laws are going to change all the time. Um, it's highly likely to go up in any way. It's 750 watt, as we discussed in America, um, and it's not in the public's interest for you to be prosecuted for electric bike because in fact they're trying to get people off out of cars onto electric bikes um, so yeah that shouldn't come into consideration unless you really want to be technical and you want to tick all the boxes and be legal in which case you are absolutely limited to set uh, 250 watts in the UK or 300 in Europe or 750 in America um, you can get if you are going to go the legal route, 250 watts, I would go for a mid-drive kit rather than a hub drive because you really need that power through all the gears, especially for hills. You'll get plenty of torque, uh, especially the new-end Bosch Mitsubishi motors. The fourth thing you've got to consider is your personal aptitude. Are you good with electrics and mechanics? If so, you can buy the kits, uh, you can buy the kits and the components yourself and put it together. It's not really that difficult. It, it really depends if you've got the confidence to do it yourself. They usually come with instructions and there's plenty of tutorials on YouTube and the manufacturer's websites for the kits. Uh, but Fang is a famous one. They do a really powerful uh, 1500 watt uh, mid-drive kit which actually overclocks to over 3000 watts with ease. Um, but again, if you're not confident with building it yourself, there's companies like Cyclotricity which has pre-built uh, bikes they tend to be 
um, cheaper really than what you could do yourself because obviously the company wants to make a big profit but then you get the year's warranty and you know there's this area of support official support if something goes wrong um, the last consideration really is make model and review um, if you want a specific make if you've uh, first off you should be reviewing all after you've done all the considerations you should be reviewing what's out there um, if you're going for a pre-built bike look up the manufacturer look up the reviews go on Amazon go on bike specialists and places like that um, and see what what is the general consensus with that kit you know does it have limitations does it burn out does it you know last really long are people happy with it is a good value for money um, like I said, Bafang is the pretty much the leader in motors. Um, there isn't really one in in regards to batteries. Um, there's a lot of batteries coming over from China, etc. So you know, it's really hit and miss. eBay is a really good source of batteries, but then again, I've had batteries from eBay. Some have been fine, and others have burnt out in the space of six weeks. Um, I'm actually currently waiting for one to come back uh, from repair. Um, but yeah, those are the main factors you need to consider. Um, I don't think there's anything else which need, which comes into the consideration process. Once you've answered all those questions, you really have a de definitive idea of what you want. And once you've got that, you can start, start searching online. Um, if you're new to e-bikes, I really wouldn't go the kit route. Um, because you just want to get to the fun factor straight away. Um, and it's not too much of a price hike to go with a decent manufacturer. And I think you'd be quite disappointed if you invested a lot of money and you couldn't get it tuned quite right or working quite right. Um, the things I missed previously. Don't skimp out on the brakes um, when buying an e-bike. Make sure they're hydraulic. Make sure they're high-end high, high -end brakes because you're going to be doing a lot of braking over a standard bike simply because you're going to be constantly accelerating, you're going to be constantly going down hills and up hills, and you really need the ability to brake. Um, apart from that, electric bikes offer great potential. I think they're definitely the future, and it's nice to see the government take in consideration of the current rules, which are dated, and it's going to solve a lot of problems around congestion, pollution, and even cost. To charge an electric bike costs a couple of pennies, and you could do, you know, like 20 miles. With regards to, you know, a car would cost you like four pound, you know, and that's that's only going to ever rise. So it is really a no-brainer if you're considering a, a short commute. I'd say um, probably the the sweet spot is about uh, 15, 20 miles for an electric bike. Um, anything up to that is absolutely perfect, custom built for an electric bike. Obviously, you've got other issues you need to consider with electric bike over a say a traditional car you know you're going to be out and about you're going to be in all weathers and you're more vulnerable to the wind um you're more vulnerable to the rain you can offset that by wearing the right equipment but obviously it's a bit of a bit of a hassle if you're using it to get to work because then you've got to change because you're wet etc etc but generally speaking um it is a worthwhile investment and something you could probably replace your car for short journeys, especially in the summertime and the spring and the autumn, uh, maybe not so much in the winter. Thank you.